Good hit. In this project video, we revisit the idea of using high density polyethylene film and grocery bags as a laminate for composite armor. I'll also be showcasing a new method for laminating with this film that is much quicker and easier than previously shown. So let's get started. <laughs> that, that is very promising. So this is now the lightest rifle rated plate I've ever made. Seven pounds, two ounces. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're revisiting the idea of laminating with high density polyethylene. If you've seen the previous video on this topic, you know, I'll put a link in the description if you haven't. I made these six by six samples using nothing more than like grocery bag, high density polyethylene painter plastic film, fiberglass, jute, you know, a bunch of different materials just to see how well it would hold up against various rounds from pistols to rifles, right? And they did pretty good. I've been wanting to scale it up and test some other material along the way. And that's just kind of where we're at today on this channel. I wanted to do more before I released this video, but I feel like there's enough here that you guys can maybe utilize this information and come up with your own designs from it because it's pretty effective. I was able to make a plate that only weighs seven pounds and two ounces that was able to handle rec rounds. It was a little on the thicker side because it was a ceramic composite hybrid, but I think that we could honestly dial it down and maybe even get it a little bit lighter. Hmm. Main thing is changing out some of the composite fabric because today I only used nylon and not even good grades of nylon. Cheap nylon that you can get at any craft store. So the fact that it even was able to reach rifle rated threats is a pretty impressive fact I feel. So if you're new here make sure to like share and subscribe we have a lot to cover a new method of laminating with just nothing more than a $25 stove top griddle electric griddle right and some of the issues that I ran into laminating with this method so all right let's get started. All right so first let's talk about the nylon I use and then we'll get into the actual method of laminating and of course the ballistic testing. So this nylon is some of the cheapest material I've used, right? It's literally like it was $7, like maybe $8 a, a yard, like a square yard. And uh, I got it on sale. <laughs> so it, it is a very light material. This is, like I said, I picked it up at a craft store. You can almost see through it. I mean, 40 layers of this material with no resin only weighed 10 ounces for 40 layers. So I knew I was going to need a lot, a lot of this material order to even come close to a ballistic plate. Partially the reason why, you know, it was an inch and a quarter for a full sapple plate that was able to handle rifle rounds. This is the first area you could optimize because obviously you could get like ballistic nylon stuff that's like 1,000 or 1,500 to like 12,000 denier right they make that sort of stuff and you can find it uncoated it often has a urethane coating because people like to make backpacks out of it but that's what this material is much thicker much tougher right they're both nylon it's just that this stuff is almost like silk how thin it is so I needed a lot of layers of it to you know make anything out of it so just giving you an idea that you know if I were to try this again or what I plan to do in the future is to get like maybe even a 200 denier a 500 denier 700 a thousand that sort of thing and see how it stacks up and that's where you're really going to be able to optimize these plates is getting a stronger fabric you know base fabric it's going to weigh more but you're going to need less layers so it's going to be thinner and if you can dial in how much you need of that versus how much high density polyethylene you need to laminate it you could theoretically make something that's thinner and lighter I don't know how much lower than seven pounds you could get it, but I kind of want to see if I could even get it right at seven for a 12 by 10 Sapa. That would be, you know, optimal. And that's kind of the goal with this moving forward. So I just wanted to share with you how incredibly light and honestly not optimal of a material we start with. 
And of course, with the high density polyethylene, I use both, uh, you know, grocery bags and painter's plastic film. I had a lot of film left over from those early small samples, so we, my wife and I, cut them into 12 by 10 sapa plate size for laminating on this. But you can honestly use grocery bags. There are plenty of times that even during these plates, I had to end up using grocery bags in lieu of the painter's film. There's no difference, really. If anything, the, the grocery bags weigh a little bit more because it's a slightly thicker film. But by the end of it, you're going to use more of the painter plastic to get full impregnation of the fibers anyways, I found. So it, it all equals out. And I don't see any difference between them from a ballistic standpoint because they're both high-density polyethylene in film form. So they pretty much function exactly the same. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss how I made these with laminating. So I first started by trying my original method of laminating HDPE into fibers by placing high density polyethylene film in between like five to six layers of nylon, clamping it in between two metal sheets and placing it into an oven set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Now this process does work, but it takes a lot of time oven space and can really smell up the kitchen. So I've been looking for an alternative method and one came from Odd Prince on my community discord. He had been laminating plastic into microfiber cloth using a t-shirt press. And I thought, you know, that's actually a pretty cool idea. A t-shirt heat press is nothing more than a flat surface that heats up to a specified temperature and claps the fabric to adhere films and dyes to the surface. Now, I didn't really want to waste all the money buying something that may or may not work for this application, you know, the amount of layers I needed to laminate, so I decided to go a slightly cheaper route that was of similar concept. So I bought a cheap electric griddle from Walmart that only cost around $25. It had a pretty smooth surface, save for one groove on a side to collect oils, and was about 10 inches wide by 20 inches long, so plenty of room to laminate a sap of plate on. It also had a really nice temperature dial. So for my very first experiment, I used three to five layers of nylon, and I set it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, much like I would with the oven. This ended up being way too hot as it damaged the nylon. So I backed it back down to uh, 275 degrees to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and found that that was a perfect range. So for pressure, I used four clamps, um, a sheet of metal, and a 25 pound weight. I would also use parchment paper to keep the high density polyethylene from sticking to the surface of the metal. Once I had a method that worked down, I made five layer plies to see how well it was holding together. All right, so here's just some of the sample plies, one of six layers, one of five. You can see that some areas, when it the plastic shrank, it ripped. That's all right, because we'll add more layers on top. This is also why I like to kind of do only five, so that way I can kind of dial in how much plastic is needed. Same effect was happening here. So more um, plastic is going to be needed. But you can see how well it laminated on the edges, really where the clamping force was. The wrinkling effect also comes from it shrinking and the parchment paper that I use. Sometimes that'll cause it to crinkle up. But I will show you one of the full-size ones I made and uh, you can see over time it cleans up. Anyways, in this right here you see this gapping area? That never, that never finished laminating. So that partially shrank and probably pulled back so there was a void there an air pocket luckily yet again once we heat it up and we'll make sure that this side is the farthest down now and uh, build up from there guarantee you that'll work itself out but this is optimal right here so I've been dialing in how much uh, HDPE you need to keep it from really like forming major pits I mean it did a little bit here and here but this was like an optimal amount because it laminated really well so 
So once I had this method down, I started doing 10 layers at a time instead of 5. I also added two larger clamps and upped the weight to 35 pounds on top. This helped even out the pressure on the top plate. I also upped the amount of HDPE in between the nylon from two layers of film up to four for both the grocery bag material and the painter's plastic. So essentially two grocery bags per layer of nylon. This made a much stiffer composite with less pits and holes in the plastic. Once I had a bunch of these 5-ply and 10-ply pieces, I simply stacked them together and reheated them on the griddle to reach the desired thickness for my final plates. So I ended up going with 40 layers of nylon for the first plate and 50 layers for both the second and third plates. Now we're only really going to focus on plates 2 and 3 for the time being because plate 1 also had some 40mm HDPE sheet added to it. And honestly, it didn't hold up together as well as the 50 layer grocery bag and painter plastic ones. So with plate 2, I added two Capri Classic porcelain tiles for a strike face. Just like I did with my fiberglass welding blanket plates. The only difference is that I used just duct tape instead of a coating. As I wasn't as concerned with getting like a higher multi-hit capability out of this plate and it's much easier to take apart to study the insides. It's also important to note that this plate weighed a pound less than those fiberglass ones. The final third plate only had one ceramic layer and weighed four pounds six ounces. Once they were all taped together it was off to the range. Alright plate number three with the 45 ACP metal jacket whenever you're ready. Good hit. 680 feet per second. Five pound plate and it stopped. Put a bulge in the back at 50 layers. So we can step this up now to the nine millimeter. All right, nine millimeter time. Cool, cool. Good hit. Oh, what did the chronograph read? Much spicier. In point there. Still stopped. Right there. That's what I love to see. Nine millimeter also stopped. It's a five pound plate. That's not too shabby. Okay, 357 Magnum time. All right, so 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, or now it's onto the 357 Magnum after nine millimeter, so. Good hit. I think the shade might be throwing off the readings on this a bit. However, it still stopped it. That is really bigger impact than the other three. So it stopped all three of these. This is a five pound plate. Nice. Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and try out the double layered one against 7.62 by 39. Yeah, I can wheel that up some for you if you need. I'm good. Okay. Good hit. Significantly faster projectile. 7.62 by 39. Entry there. I think an exit. No! It actually stopped it. <laughs> That, that is very promising. So this is now the lightest rifle rated plate I've ever made. Seven pounds, two ounces. Whew, that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. It stopped it. Bulged so, it though. Yeah, oh yeah, there's definitely a bulge. We don't have like cl ballistic clay to Check really it tested but this now is one of the lightest rifle rated plates I've ever made seven pounds two ounces 
compared to the, the fiberglass ones that we made that one time that were... That's not a terrible bulge. Right? It's not. Yeah. No, I've seen worse bulges. <laughs> I mean, for... Uh... Right, some of the stuff that we've shot over the years. All right, so now that we see it actually was able to stop the 7.62 by 3923 grain, going on to the 556, much higher velocity, whenever you're ready. Good hit. Yeah, that one skirting out at about 300 feet per second faster than the 5.5 or the uh, 7.62 by 39. Entry. Ooh, did we have a pass through? We did not. Here, let's take a look. Let's check up here. This is from a lot earlier. That wasn't. So it would have landed in that region. No lead spray. It's a good sign. You just see cracking of the HDPE on the back. Let's take a look. Come on. There we go. So you see how a, that thick layer of HDPE at the very back was starting to split. It did not, however, make it through as it would have sprayed lead in this area. So this also stopped the 556. All right, highly doubt that the MA55 will stop, but you can put it maybe in like a... Uh, top right, top left? Yeah, that sort of thing, just like not really far up in the corner, but where maybe some of the ceramic might not be compromised as much. Or dead center. Your butt. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Almost 3,000 feet per second. <laughs> that made it through right next to <laughs> That's fantastic. Yep, that made it through. And see, that's what I was expecting. That's how I know the M193 actually stopped. Is that's how it, it would have looked if it was a failure. Even though the ceramic was compromised, I just don't think the material is strong enough for it. You would have to be a higher grade nylon so we'll probably back it down put a couple more 7.62 by 39 or uh, just standard ball 556 um. all right so let's go ahead and start dissecting these plates we ended up shooting it a total of seven times the m855 made it through and so did another 556 round but other 7.62 by 39s didn't and another 556 five, didn't right it's just a bunch of extra shooting footage you can see here the exit of that one 556 five, and the m855 right the ceramic was compromised in this area so you know failure is a failure though but the fact is out of seven shots five of them stopped and that's pretty nice. And then this plate, number five, we ended up shooting a, a bunch more with the uh, 357 Magnum, as you can see. So first it was 556, five, or sorry, uh, 45 ACP, nine millimeter, 357 Magnum, then we shot it like three more times. And you can see the bullets here. Really like that, nothing made it through, so. I didn't have my 44 Magnum out at the range that day because I ran out of ammo more recently. So I wasn't able to do a true 3A test. And I'm not entirely sure, maybe if it was completely uncompromised, it might have been able to handle the 44 Magnum out of the 20 inch barrel that I have. I like that jacket stuck in there, but I just wanted to show that. And so the first place, because I imagine some of you will be at asking I have this really thick nylon or uh, really thick HDPE film because I was running out of H the uh, thinner stuff it's 40 mil and this had a bunch of it in it and it just simply couldn't handle uh, without a ceramic so I want to dial this method in at a later date because it only weighed two pounds it was only a half inch thick but right here you can see 
that is a 38 special snub nose it just barely stopped right so but these two plates a lot, i feel a lot more interesting especially this one being that it's one of the lightest rifle rated plates i've ever made and handling five shots is a pretty impressive fact so all right let's get on to the uh final thoughts all right so it's the end of the video a couple things uh, yeah, I misspoke. This was actually shot nine times, not seven, and only two of them made it through, right? The M855, which is a mild steel core penetrator. You know, not really an AP round, but it makes sense that it just couldn't handle it. I think that we need to continue to dial in with some other grades of nylon to really see, or any other composite material for that matter. I just really like the cost of nylon, and that's why I chose it, right? Um... And I also shot, like I mentioned, the uh, plate number three a few more times with the 357 Magnum. Both of these honestly handled pretty well, all things considering. I wasn't entirely sure how this material would stack up. And right now I'm sitting on essentially one of the lightest, you know, about the same thickness as the fiberglass welding blanket, but well under a pound less. So, because those were flirting with 9 pounds and some of them more. And this is 7 pounds, 2 ounces. That just shows you how lightweight high-density polyethylene is. It is a very strong laminate. Uh, this new method I love. Thank you so much for coming along with the ride. I know that it's kind of getting close to the 20-minute mark. So, just a few things on what's coming up. I do have another update for the Jeep that I've been planning out and working on. And hopefully I'll have out in the next few weeks. Work has been... Well, it's been work, and so I haven't had as much free time, sadly. But I also have another cool project that, you know, we'll save it. Uh, here it is, if I can find it. Which is incorporating ceramic into high-density polyethylene for a strike face. This right here is just marbles impregnated into a solid block. Just so I could kind of get an idea of the object density packing of the balls in question, I have alumina oxide and porcelain balls for it and quite a few of them, so I'm going to be doing multiple tests because I want to improve on our ceramic strike faces, and I think this would be so cool if we could do this and do a HDPE laminate um, composite. Man, it would be so light, so light. I'm really excited about that idea. But yeah, so a Jeep build coming up. I also have another build that I'm really excited about that uh, the guys on my Patreon have been helping me with. I've been allowing them to vote on certain things. It's my way of saying thank you for all their continued support over the years and how much I appreciate it. Only really two guys are involved in the voting process, but I think everybody will enjoy what the final project, uh, what it ends up being. So that's going to be a surprise, and the guys from my Patreon know what I'm talking about. So that's a very big thank you. And of course to everybody that has supported me over the years. I really appreciate it. But uh, alright guys, it's finally the end of the video. I think you hopefully learn something from this method and that you could try out yourself and uh as always i will see you in the next one take care